People pleasing often takes root in our early years. If you grew up in an environment where love, approval or attention was conditional, where you had to behave a certain way to receive positive reinforcement, you may have learned to prioritize others' needs over your own as a survival strategy. So people pleasing is more than just a tendency to be helpful. It's a behavioral pattern where we constantly put others' needs before our own, often without even realizing it. People pleasing may seem like a harmless trait, being kind, helpful, or avoiding conflict, but it's much more than a habit. It's a psychological archetype we've created to protect ourselves. So once a necessary survival strategy, it may now be holding you back. So who is this people pleaser within you and what is it trying to protect you? Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to another episode of Moments of Awe. I'm your host, Catherine Plano, and today we're diving into the often misunderstood world of people pleasing. This episode invites you to look beyond the surface of this behavior and explore the deeper subconscious archetypes that drive it. People pleasing may seem like a harmless trait, being kind, helpful or avoiding conflict, but it's much more than a habit. It's a psychological archetype we've created to protect ourselves. So once a necessary survival strategy, it may now be holding you back. So who is this people pleaser within you and what is it trying to protect you? We'll uncover why this archetype clings to us despite the burnout, resentment, and loss of self it often brings. So together, we'll explore how this pattern develops, the hidden gains it offers, and most importantly, how to reclaim your power and break free from its grip. So let's dive into three key insights that will help you transform this behavior and step into your authentic self. Insight number one why we hang on to people pleasing. So let's start by exploring the why behind people pleasing. Why do we often feel compelled to please others even when it means sacrificing our own needs? Understanding where this behavior comes from helps us to see it not just as a habit, but as a protective mechanism we've carried with us often since childhood. People pleasing often takes root in our early years. If you grew up in an environment where love, approval, or attention was conditional, where you had to behave a certain way to receive positive reinforcement, you may have learned to prioritize others' needs over your own as a survival strategy. This behavior learned to keep us safe and secure as children often lingers into adulthood shaping how we interact with the world. At its core, people-pleasing is often about avoiding rejection or abandonment. It's the part of us that believes our worth is determined by how much we can please others, keep them happy, or avoid conflict. This fear keeps us trapped, continually seeking external validation rather than looking from within. For some, people-pleasing becomes a way to cope with feeling of low self-esteem. So by focusing on meeting others' needs, we can momentarily escape our own insecurities, hiding behind the facades of being the helpful, agreeable one. But while this may offer short-term relief, it ultimately prevents us from confronting and healing our deeper wounds. So reflect on these questions. What role do people pleasing play in your past? And how has it served you? And why are you still holding on to it? Understanding the origins of your people-pleasing tendencies can illuminate why this archetype persists and why it's so challenging to let go. Insight number two, what is people-pleasing and how does it manifest? So now that we've explored why people-pleasing develops, let's delve into what it actually is and how it shows up in our daily lives. So people-pleasing is more than just a tendency to be helpful. It's a behavioral pattern where we constantly put others' needs before our own, often without even realizing it. 
So think of people pleasing as a character within you, a psychological archetype you've created, and its main job is to keep you liked, accepted, and safe, even if that means compromising your true self. So this can manifest in many ways. Have you ever agreed to take on extra work, help a friend at an inconvenient time, or attend an event you'd rather skip? This is your people pleaser speaking, prioritizing others' expectations of your own boundaries. People pleasers often go to great lengths to avoid conflict, even if it means suppressing their own opinions or desires, fearing that speaking up or disagreeing will lead to rejection or disapproval. The need for external validation is another hallmark of people pleasing. You might find yourself over apologizing, changing your behavior to fit in, or constantly checking if others are happy with you. So the real question is this, what purpose is this serving in your life? How does people pleasing protect you? And what is it trying to keep you safe from? These actions might offer short-term comfort, but they come with a long-term cost, resentment, burnout, and a loss of connection with your own authentic self. Insight number three, cultivating self-compassion and authenticity. So understanding where people-pleasing comes from and how it manifests is essential, but the next step is learning how to work with it. So overcoming people-pleasing doesn't mean becoming selfish or unkind. It's about reclaiming your voice, setting healthy boundaries, and nurturing your self-worth. So the first step in overcoming people pleasing is awareness. So start by identifying situations or people that tend to trigger your people pleasing behavior. Is it a demanding boss, a critical family member, or social situations that make you feel uneasy? Awareness of these triggers can help you anticipate and manage them more effectively. So be kind to yourself as you navigate through this journey. Recognize that people pleasing was once a strategy to protect you, and it's okay if it's hard to let go. So treat yourself with the same understanding and patience that you offer to others. So reflect on what the hidden or secondary gain you get from people pleasing. Even if it seems unhelpful, acknowledging can be liberating. Boundaries are not barriers. They are essential for healthy relationships with yourself and others. So practice saying no when necessary without feeling the need to over-explain or justify your choices. Each time you set a boundary, you reclaim a piece of your authentic self. So work on building your self-worth through mindfulness, coaching, or activities that bring you joy. Challenge the negative beliefs that keep you trapped in people-pleasing, like the idea that you must please others to be loved. Replace them with affirmations of your inherent worth. Visualize life without people-pleasing. And what would happen if you stopped? What fears or consequences come to mind? Confront these fears with curiosity rather than judgment by imagining a life where your choices are guided by your true desires, you start to envision a new path forward. Remember, every step you take towards honoring yourself is a step away from people pleasing. It's not about changing overnight. It's about making consistent, conscious choices that reflect your true values and needs. As we conclude this journey into the world of people pleasing, remember that this behavior was once a protector, a shield that kept you safe. But now it's time to thank it for its services and gently let it go. Your value is not tied to how much you do for others, but to how deeply you honor your own needs. So thank you for joining me in this episode of Moments of Awe. If today's discussion resonated with you, please subscribe, share, and leave a comment with your thoughts or experiences. I'd love to hear how you're working to break free from people-pleasing and embrace your authentic self. So until next time, let's celebrate the awe of living authentically. Namaste.